to Auto Scoop with Adam Goldfine and Joyce Littell. Welcome back to Auto Scoop. This is where you get the inside scoop. But today, we're talking from the heart. I mean, you know, once a person is affected by an accident, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a heartfelt thing, especially when someone has either lost a limb or, sure. I mean, wasn't in a, in a position to re buy a new car. Or what it, 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 when you're in an accident, it changes your whole life. Yeah, and, and, and Richard Griffin, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you. You're becoming a, a staple here. For right. Us, which, is, <laughs> which is good because you're really helping so many people out there who have these kind of personal situations. And what I wanted to do with you today, if we could, was kind of follow up from the V103 show and have you go through some stories of what happened to some people and how it ended up. You know, back to Joyce asked the great question, what happens after, you know, they sweep up the glass and, you know, and the tow truck pulls away, right. you know, and they go to the doctor, what happens? And, and can you do that for us today? Absolutely, I'll be glad to. I, I'm passionate about helping uh, injured victims and it is so sad because there is truly a story uh, behind everyone's situation. It's a lot more than just what are the medical bills and how the accident happened. It's what happens afterwards. I mean, we do our best to get them a recovery that's going to help them put the pieces back together. But if they do have a scenario where they have, have a traumatic brain injury or a spinal injury or can't play with their kids anymore, I mean, that's the, the saddest part of what I do. But we, we do try our best to help them in every way we can. I think, I think what, can, uh, what could and should happen today is that you share a story and walk us through the actual process and, you know, where it is. Did it end? Or, you, or is it something that you still have to go through? Because somebody else's story, it's, it's, uh, there's a listener out there that have dealt with, a viewer rather, that have dealt with some similar stuff. And there's actually uh, some of the proudest uh, situations that I have to, to think about are the ones where people have recovered, you know, gotten their settlement, but get, gotten back into life. I mean, they've done everything they could to put the pieces back together. Uh, sometimes, for example, if they've got a serious injury and can't continue with the same type of work, you know, they are utilizing that settlement to hopefully get retrained and get back into life, get back into another field of work. And those are the real heroes that can put it back together. And I think, I think what's important for everyone out there who's watching the show, and if you have not been involved in an accident, I don't want you to be uh, just being a voyeur and watching someone else's stuff. What you've got to realize is there's almost a thousand accidents every day in Georgia. Almost a thousand. In fact, during this show, and this is a terrible statistic to say, but five people will die during this show alone in an automobile accident. And thousands will be injured across the United States in addition. And which, so it's a terrible thing and nobody plans for it. You know, you didn't get up today thinking it was your turn. Mm -hmm. God forbid somebody is going to get hurt today. So we need you to see the process and understand it's much bigger than a down payment on a car. It's much bigger than do you get the SUV or the CUV. This right. is the stuff that matters It's life changing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's life changing. We've heard because, it with Wanda and right, Cedric, right? Right, uh, Wanda and Cedric, uh, Wanda who does the uh, Frank and Wanda Morning Show on V, she experienced it uh, with her nephew. And she have said over and over that it has totally changed her family's life. Right. Totally. That, and it, that's on, but, but the thing is, that's so ongoing. And when a, when a situation like that, when it has caused so much brain damage that now he is, he is now a responsibility of a parent probably for the rest of his life, is that something that you still be involved in or, you know, once the settlement is done, it's done, you, you're done? Well, from the legal case, I mean, you are going to have a resolution either through a settlement or through uh, trying the case and getting a jury to award what that case is worth and, and part of my job is to paint the picture to the jury of exactly what the life was like before the accident and how it's been negatively impacted. Those facts make all the difference in the value of the case. So, so uh, not to cut you off, but so in other words, if somebody gets into an automobile accident and they break an arm and the arm cost $5,000 in hospital bills to, to you know, repair, you know, right. to, to remedy. Are, are there damages limited to just the 5000 the cost of the cast? They absolutely aren't. Um, every case is different, and the jury is the one, if you can't reach a settlement, the jury's going to be the one that by law has the right to decide what that's worth. They're going to get to consider and hear about 
how that broken arm has impacted them for the period of time that they got the treatment. And then if, the, if someone has a broken leg, for example, and has a limp for the rest of their life, that they get to hear about the activities. Are, were they avid joggers? Or were they, uh, you know, if you hurt your hand, if you were a, a pianist that, you know, no longer can enjoy that, those are and all big And you get paid factors. for that. You do. That's part of the pain and suffering, the kind of loss of enjoyment of life. That is the real gray area in cases. It's kind of black and white with regards to what do the medical bills add up to and what are the lost wages add up to. Uh, there's a lot of of case-by-case -case analysis and a skilled attorney has to really put together the pieces for the jury to know exactly what that value is for that pain and suffering and, and that loss of enjoyment. And that's life. why you've often said not to rush not to rush it. I mean it's a process particularly if it's an injury that results in some type of uh, lost limb or broken limb. You know you don't want to rush it because you know you got to look at their life yesterday, today, yeah. and tomorrow. And that um, reminds me of a call that we got on the V103 show that we had on the auto scoop. And that caller called in and they had a medical complication that came about later. They'd already settled their case, if I remember correctly. And that's a scenario where they didn't have an attorney that, and the statute runs and they can't do anything. One of the things that an attorney will do and one of the things that we try our best to focus on is making sure that we get those doctors to fully outline what that prognosis, what the future is going to be. What are, is there going to be future medical expenses? Those are things that are going to be very, very valuable and needed money to put the life back together without an attorney and adjuster is simply going to look at what are your medical bills and maybe we'll pay that. Right. Mm. That's something to think about. If you have a question for Richard Griffin, now it's the time to call 404-607-1407. That's 404-607-1407 because I'm sure, you know, after listening to this show and, 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 and viewing it, there are a lot of people who have suffered and might not have taken the proper steps and they're still suffering. Yeah. And you'll bring us through some other stories as well, right? I'd be glad to. Absolutely. Right. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Auto Scoop. Welcome back to Auto Scoop. Thanks for joining us right here on the CW Friday mornings, 10 o'clock. You can get it. Now, what I would like for um, um, Richard to do is to, to make it real life. Can you give us a real life story and walk us through it and then help us understand? what has taken place and where they are now. Absolutely, I will. Um, one of the favorite parts of my, ca of my being an attorney is that I'm able to really get to know the people that I represent, especially if we have to try the case. You really, you get to know them, you get to know their friends, their families, and uh, there's a, I'll be glad to do that. There was a, a case that involved uh, a really nice gentleman. He was probably, I think at the time of the accident, about 34 years old. It was on a Sunday, and he had uh, just said uh, a brief goodbye to his wife and his five-year-old little girl. They went on home from church, and he stayed for deacon's meeting. Now, after that, he got in his Mazda pickup truck, and he began his trek home. And on his way home, he was within a couple of miles of his house. Uh, suddenly, he sees a red 300ZX that is going probably 100 miles an hour lost control and is in this residential kind of neighborhood is skidding back and forth trying to maintain the control of the vehicle. Well they didn't and they hit uh, my client head on mm. and it was a terrible terrible collision. It was such a collision that you know the the truck was pushed back the cabin collapsed in on him oh causing tremendous damage to one of his legs. Uh, he had a ruptured spleen, he had broken bones, that uh, ribs that had punctured a lung. They had to use the, law, the jaws of life to actually break, you know, to tear open that vehicle to get him out. Uh, Who was they, driving the other car? It was a 16-year-old uh, boy that had been in and out of actually drug rehab. And uh, he was not supposed to be driving that vehicle. Uh, but did he, he have a license? He did have a license, but the, the parents had actually written him off of the policy. They had excluded him from that policy uh, because of his past history and problems. Uh, and he hadn't been back from drug rehab for very long. And then there he goes, you know, they go out to, apparently his parents went off to dinner and a movie and, and he got the keys and got in that car and raced down that residential road. God. Mm. Now, he had uh, injuries that obviously would have carried past the accident. I mean, this is something, is he still living with today? He I mean, is, he survived, right? He did survive, and uh, he had a year of uh, life that was not, you know, that was very, very challenging. He had to learn to walk again. 
you know, he had rehab just to begin to function again. When they got him to the hospital, they had pretty much given up on him thinking he was not going to survive. You know, he's in a coma and, you know, they did a marvelous job and mm -hmm. saved his oh life. Uh, but, you know, he, after the fact, you know, he did make a recovery. He did get back into the workforce. You know, he cleaned airplanes for Delta. Uh, and, you know, life got back together. He's got one leg that's permanently shorter than the other, and, you know, so you've got some physical issues that he still deals with. Um, what, what type of judgment uh, did you get, or verdict, I should say? Did you try it, or did you settle it? We did try that case. So um, what was the verdict? The verdict was $2.5 million, uh, mm -hmm. and that was in Gainesville, and, and he had, you know, in the hundreds of thousands in medical expenses. Uh, so that's the example where the medical expenses that were a couple hundred thousand, but his verdict was two and a half million for his pain and suffering and for right. his future care. Right. And there are certain elements and damages you can get in addition to your medical and your pain and suffering if, for example, someone's driving intoxicated or if they you know, are racing other vehicles or things that show a reckless disregard for human life then you've got a scenario where you can go for punitive damages, which are damages not just to pay the medical bills or the lost wages, but to actually punish that behavior that is so reckless that it's either an intentional or just total disregard so for the So did you safety. do that? Uh, that was an element as well. It right. was. It sounded like it should have been. <laughs> I mean, yeah. could you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, if, so if, if somebody, though, watching today, and it's the same question we had asked on radio, uh, has a question that they want you to review, uh, will you do that for them free of charge from a consultation standpoint? Absolutely. I, I'm more than willing to do that. Anyone who's injured, and you know, you just call my office. Uh, that number is 404-303-8400. Uh, we have uh, attorneys, myself and others, that can answer your legal questions. We're going to go through a series. We're going to first of all establish is there liability? Was there a negligent act by another driver? To have a personal injury claim, you, it isn't just that you got hurt but it's that you got hurt because of someone else's negligence. Okay. So that's the first step. The next step is we're going to find out you know, if there are any witnesses, are there photographs we can send our in investigators out to take photos of the property damage. Uh, we're going to try to establish that there's insurance, and then we're going to try to guide them through making sure that they get the treatment that they need. Okay. So do you have a website also? I do. I do. Uh, the website, uh, the easiest way to get to my website is injuryatlanta.com, injuryatlanta.com. Uh, that leads you right to the GriffinLawFirm.net. And we have got some new videos that we've actually put on there that are very educational and very interesting that show uh, some different issues that come up and how to deal with them uh, if you're involved in car accidents or hurt on the job. Right. I was going to say, just give your number one more time and then, okay. we'll, and then we'll go to calls and stuff. It's 404-303-8400. Okay. And again, that's InjuryAtlanta.com. I tell you, we'll take the calls when we return from sure. the break. But what I wanted to ask uh, for for um, um, an accident that wasn't that wasn't so severe, do you still recommend that a person still contact an attorney and follow some some steps to make sure that everything is in order? Do you still recommend that? Say I if really it was do. just a, a, a bump. Well, and it's interesting you say that. It, it, you know, it's important that people. Uh, don't try to make a mountain out of a molehill. I mean, you want to get treatment only if you need it. But if you're truly injured, whether it's a huge injury or a small injury, you still are going to have the same problems. You're going to have issues of getting those medical bills paid, getting the lost wages paid, getting a fair settlement that's going to help with pain and suffering. If it's a small settlement, then it's a small settlement. Either way, to have it a, a fair uh, negotiation, you're going to need to have an attorney guide you through that process. All right. We'll be back with more Auto Scoop. We'll ask Richard about some of those small incidents as well as other stories and yours as well. So here's the deal. If you have a question, call us up, 404-607-1407. We'll be back with more Auto Scoop, so don't go away. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss these real-life stories on the show today.